CPIC at the request of Martin Courtney. <coughs> I am going to try to uh, turn this picture into a, a fairly high contrast black and white. This is a raw file. Um, it is a shot on a Canon 5D3 and imported into Lightroom as a DNG file, a digital negative. So uh, go into develop mode and first thing I would do is look to color temperature. The color temperature is coming at 5150 which is not bad, that's around daylight temperature. I might just raise that to 5, um, 52. So I'll just click on it and hit the plus arrow and that brings it up to 52. Exposure wise, looks as if it could do with another maybe third of a stop. So we'll just click on exposure and go one, two, three. So that's ex increased exposure by about a third of a stop. Um, might increase the shadow detail. Uh, one, two, three, fifteen or twenty. And just look, there's a bit of bunch of blacks up the left hand side here. I might just. Um, bring that in a wee bit, so 5, 10, 15 maybe. Um, clarity, I'd like a lot of clarity in something like this, so I'm gonna go 5, 10, 15, 20. Every time I press the plus arrow, it is going up five. Um, so that looks about right. Now the next thing I wanna do is the crop. And just by clicking on that, I can now slightly rotate this. So by rotating it, I am increasing the slant of the eyes so instead of going straight across the picture they're going slightly down and um, I just then want to try and get the uh, the eye on the left third something like that um, and hit enter and then it is photo edit in Photoshop so that will now come into Photoshop <coughs> So the file is just coming into Photoshop. It's a wee bit slow because of the fact that the screen is recording. Normally it would be a lot quicker. Okay, here we go. So people who know me will know that my way of working is always, the first thing I do is Command J, which creates a new layer here. You can see there's a, the original layer and then there's layer one. So Command J creates a duplicate layer and I'm going to go filter, Nix software into Color FX Pro. The one I'm looking for here is Tonal Contrast. Um, so I'm going to click on Tonal Contrast. And by default, in Color FX Pro 4, saturation is set to plus 20. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to bring that down to mine to zero. And I'm just going to hit Compare. So that's before, after. So you can see it's bringing a lot more detail into the background here. Uh, it's really the hat and the background I'm concerned with here. I don't want to necessarily do this to the face just yet. So I'm just going to hit OK with the default settings, um, having reduced the saturation. So again, this might be a wee bit slow because of the recording. Okay, so this is now applied to the top layer. So if I click the top layer off, we're back to the original and there's the new layer. So I'm just going to 
put a mask on so clicking here applies a white mask and I'm going to hit uh, B for brush and I'm going to hit X to change the color to black and I'm going to use the bracket key to make a nice brush here <coughs> and I'm now going to paint out over the face and the collar and the tie so whenever I release the mouse here you're going to have a, a white circle um, in the mask there we go a black circle in the mask rather so that's going to come up here again it's very slow because of the recording so there we go um, so it's only applying to the background, the hat and the jacket so I'm just going to go flatten image and then as soon as I hit flatten image the next thing I always do is command J to do another layer and this time we're going to go filter back into Nick software and instead of using tonal contrast on the face I'm going to use detail extractor which is something new to ColorFX Pro 4 I don't think it is in ColorFX 3 so detail extractor now by default it almost has a HDR effect um, so there's the original and there's the effect of the detail extractor so it's almost HDR um, I'm going to get rid of some of that HDR effect by boosting the contrast up to about 40 so there's 40 compare before after before after and uh, I'll click OK now remember this is only for the face and this is why we use duplicate layers Okay, this is just about to apply. There we go. So I quite like what that's doing to all the image. Um, so I may just I'll just apply a mask, black mask, and I'll paint in white at about uh, I'll paint at a hundred percent over the face to bring it all back in, all that detail over the face so this is going to come in as a white hole in the black mask there we go and if I paint it 33% so I hit 33 three, and up here you'll have seen that is going to 33 so I'm going to paint over the background and without releasing the mouse, if I release the mouse I'm going to be painting over it twice so whenever I do this it's now going to appear here as a grey hole in the mask rather than a white hole eventually whenever it starts this is a large file it's probably a 24 megapixel file from a 5d3 so there's the gray mask the gray hole in the black mask and a white hole in the black mask so let's see before and after before after 
So I like all that detail being brought in, so flatten image. And then as soon as we do that, Command J again for another duplicate layer. Filter back in again to Tonal Contrast. So click on Tonal Contrast again, bring the saturation down. And let's see before and after. <coughs> so this is purely for the face this time. I don't want to enhance the, the appearance of the background here again because it's going to make it quite demanding of attention. It's just the face. So because I just want this to apply to the face, I'm going to hit the Alt button and click on the mask and that gives a black mask which blacks everything out essentially. So B for brush and white is already the foreground colour. Hit 0 for 100% opacity and just make a smallish brush. And I'm just going to paint this in over the face and nothing else. So this is applying tonal contrast only to the face. And this will now, you'll see the white hole appearing in the black mask. There we go. Before, after. So there's a lot more detail and contrast coming in just on the face there. Flatten image. And then you guessed it, Command J, and I'm going to do Image Adjustment Curves, and I'm going to brighten the whole image. Now, my curve goes down, yours probably goes up to brighten. Um, I will not explain that at the moment, but once that is done, it is hold the Alt button, click on the mask, and then this is purely for the eyes, so I hit the um, the little magnifying tool here. If you double click on the magnifying tool, it comes in at 100%. So we're zoomed in right on the eye here, and we're going to use a small brush painting at 100%. Just to bring that curved brightness layer in over the eye. So you can see the two peepholes here for the eyes, before, after, and I'll just hit Command-0 which will fill the screen with the picture, Command-J, and this time we're going to go into uh, Filter, Next Software, Silver FX Pro, so this is where I do my black and whites. You get a whole lot of presets down the left hand side with Silver FX, but I always just hit the neutral button and then play with it. So I might want to increase the, the first one is brightness, so I'll just increase the brightness of the mid tones on the highlights slightly. And uh, contrast, I'll boost the contrast maybe by 12, amplify whites, amplify blacks. If you're amplifying whites and blacks, what are you doing? You're increasing the contrast. So that is the um, 
it's not working at the moment um, so it's not allowing me to compare but I'll just come down here to toning and I'm going to apply a little sepia tone and click OK There are so many ways to convert to black and white, um, but I, I like Silver FX Pro, but I don't like the presets. I just like to do a neutral uh, conversion and then tone it and adjust the contrast to my own taste. Okay, that'll just take a second to take effect. So there we go, it is flat an image. And once you have it done to black and white, you might get a better feel for the eyes. You might feel that you can do more in the eyes. So I'm going to do Command J, and I'm going to go on the dodge tool here. Command plus 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 to zoom in on the eyes. And I'm going to hit the dodge tool, working on highlights at 20% and I'm just going to uh, dodge the highlights in the eye and before, after, so you can see there it's quite a nice little boost in the uh, brightness of the highlights flatten image and now a nice wee trick here, very simple trick, command J and image adjustment brightness and contrast so I'm just going to increase contrast by 8 and brightness by 8, contrast by maybe 25 and let's see before, after and I just want this to apply to the eye so contrast makes the, the darks darker and the highlights uh, brighter so alt mask and then we zoom in on the eye and B for brush painting at a hundred percent and we're just going to use the uh, brackets key to make that a slightly bigger brush and I'm just painting this brightness and contrast effect over the eye. So there's the two little white holes appearing in the black mask over to the right here. And before, after, before, after is quite subtle. So I'll just flatten an image. So the eyes are brightened again, increased in contrast. And then my probably um, I have a little action here which does a vignette so I'm just going to click on the vignette action and press play a lot of these actions were originally provided by Kieran White um, so I've made that 50% opacity before, after it's just darkening around the edge, flat an image Now, um, Command J again, Image, Adjustment, Curves, and I'm going to go the opposite way, I'm going to darken this time. Um, this is purely for the hat. So, Alt, Mask, that blacks it out. B for brush, and maybe we'll hit Naught for 100% opacity bracket key for a slightly bigger brush and I'm just going to darken the brightness of this hat 
because you do not want it to be demanding of attention it's going to take attention away from the face so there's the white mask off on off on I think that's fine flatten image now one of the most um, one of the best tools available is uh, in tunnel or Nick software again so back into Nick software color FX everybody should learn how to use this one it's called dark and light and center so I'm going to click on dark and light and center I'm going to by default these are the default settings I'm going to bring the border luminosity back a wee bit. I don't think we need it to be so dark. So we'll go 30 for that. Center size right down. We'll use something like 12 and click on here. Now the light was coming in from the left hand side of the picture here. So rather than clicking in the center of the nose, I'm going to click on the center of this eye as being the center of the light. So let's compare that before, after before after and all that is doing is drawing attention to the place in the picture where you want it to be uh, slightly brighter and darkening the rest so that has had a really nice effect flatten image and sharpen command J filter sharpen smart sharpen with a 5D3 I have increased my sharpening value so I've put it up to 1.2 radius uh, for a pixel which is quite high but I say unless you have a high resolution camera don't use those sort of settings so that looks okay I do this on a separate layer because you don't want to sharpen the whole picture you don't want to sharpen this part of the background um, So the sharp layer is on top and I hit Alt, Mask and then I paint back in the sharpness at 100%. So I'm only painting it in over those areas that you want to be sharp. Which is obviously the, the subject. You could do it the opposite way. You could um, put a white mask on and black, paint in black over the background. So this is going to allow the uh, the sharp layer on top to shine through the black mask once this takes effect. So simply flatten that image. And Kieran White in his actions has a nice little sepia tone. So I'm just going to click on the sepia tone and press play. And by default it's 35%. Now I already applied a sepia tone in Color FX, Silver FX, but it, it's not as strong as this. So I'm just going to hit V for the move tool and I'm going to hit 2 for 20. And that has brought the opacity down from 35 to 20% before, after. So I quite like that and flatten image and then the only thing that I think is left with this is um, there's a there's a little highlight here which is annoying me it's quite demanding of attention my attention has been drawn to it so I'm just going to hit the little um, patch tool draw a circle around it and drag it onto a darker area release and it's gone um, and I think that is now a very strong black and white image ready for print and file save and that is now being saved into Lightroom as a TIFF so it's a high quality TIFF file at co.uk